facts, why religion is the only truth or the alternative. Um, if you want to share with us, join us, and don't forget to subscribe to SC Dawa and um, become a patron as well. So if Lone Wolf, I mean, I think he wants to join us again. If you have any uh, anything to add in terms of why one would follow your religion or your ideology, please share with us. Uh, basically, I asked a question before about reincarnation, and uh, you guys gave some good, solid criticisms, but none of them really related to my initial point was about, which was about the merciful nature of God and how reincarnation is more the fulfillment of that criteria than putting someone into hellfire for eternity. But Goy Galni, I have another question. Uh, as Sikhs, we believe that God is not completely separate from the universe, but I think uh, Muslims believe that this is the case. But before the universe was created, if God was the only being in existence, how can the universe not be from him? Like, how can the universe be completely separate from him? If God was the only thing in in uh, in existence before the universe, that's my question. Okay, thank you for question. Before I move on to our panel um, uh, members to answer this question, just want to point out early on uh, your audio wasn't that very, very great, um, so we tried to understand as much as we can and answer that question accordingly. Hashim answered um, earlier on. Um, so your question was mainly related to how is Allah or God merciful? within the model that we have instead of the model of reincarnation. So I want to bring this question back to our panel members if they are willing to address that, um, Sabur and Adnan, before you answer his second question. Okay, that's fine. No, um, so who would like to take that question now, his second question? Um, Sorry, can you repeat the question very quickly? My second one? Yes. Yeah. Um, so in Sikhism, we believe that God is not um, uh, completely separate from his creation, which is the universe. But in Islam, I believe you guys believe that God is completely separate. But before the universe was created, if God was the only thing in existence, then how can the creation uh, be completely separate from him? Because he started the creation completely separately. This is, this is how simple it is. He started to create. So he was there alone. We believe he was alone. God is the first. He is the last. Right? So uh, when he started the creation, he started it just like that. We are told in the Quran that when he wants to do something, he simply says, be and it becomes. When he wants something to be, it simply becomes. With regards to Sikh, Sikh view, it is obviously influenced by a number of different ideologies, um, which is also very neoplatonic uh, in its origin, um, whereby the, Sikh, uh, the Sikhs believe that uh, they are one with God. This again, you see, if you study the history of India in the 16th and the 15th century, you come to realize there were movements already that pred predated Guru Nanak Ji. Guru Nanak Ji uh, alive in the 15th century. Okay, uh, he obviously adopted certain philosophies, certain ways of thinking from people who had come before him. And one of these ideas was Wahdatul Wujud, which was basically, in not so many words, pantheism or oneness of existence or one oneness of essence, which actually originates from Neoplatonism which actually originates from Neoplatonism. And this idea came to the Indian Sufis from uh, Al-Andalus, eventually, originally from Ibn Arabi, okay, who came up with this idea. And a lot of Sufis, even in India, adopted the, these ideologies. And I believe Guru Nanak Ji was one of the Sufis. You know, he adopted these Sufi ideas. And later on, the religion was developed into something <laughs> what became today as Sikhism. Yes. No, I'm, uh, you said that Sikhs believe that we are one with God, but that's actually false. We believe that there's something called ego, and that's what separates us from God. And the more you meditate and you connect uh, with the energy of God, you can cleanse your soul. And eventually, it's very hard to do, but you can become one with God if you if you do that right. Um, so, but, so in, in your opinion, in your opinion, okay, we are Muslims. We believe that uh, Islam 
is the way to understand God accurately, authentically, because of the reasons we have been given so far. Okay, as a Sikh, what do you have to offer to us? I mean, do you think we should be, we should be Sikhs? I mean, if you have something better to offer, we would love to 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 listen to it. Yeah, because we believe that um, you can actually connect to God in this life, which is not a concept that uh, is specific to, to Islam, I don't think. I feel like uh, there's actually a quote in uh, the Guru Granth Sahib, which is that uh, the Hindus are, are blind because they started to follow idols and stuff. The Muslim has one eye open, but one eye is blind because he only sees God outside of the universe, but he doesn't bring God in, but the Sikh has both eyes open because he sees God outside and inside. So what we aim to do is try to is try to bring God closer to us, and uh, the way we do that is through connecting to God through meditation. Uh, I, I'm aware of the quote. I'm aware of the quote. You see, the problem is this is this is a this is a view the author of that particular quote had on Muslims, whether it's Guru Nanak Ji or whether it's. Uh, uh, you know, um, the the poet Kabir, you know, the Bhagat Kabir, okay, there, there is yeah. Ram Das, there are, there, <clears throat> Guru Sahib is a collection of poetry from different people, from different sources. Our problem with Guru Granth Sahib is, with due respect, that it is not from God. We don't believe that it was actually inspired by God, okay, because there are different authors. Uh, one of them is actually Muslim, uh, Baba Farid. There is poetry of Baba Farid in Guru Granth Sahib. And how can the Sikhs read it as the word of God when the poetry actually originates from Muslim thought, right? Kabir, Bhagat Kabir, there is a debate about him, whether he was a Muslim or not. Some people say he was just a universalist who believed in the universal brotherhood of humanity. And uh, he followed this uh, movement called the Bhakti movement, right? Then we have a Hindu poet uh, whose poetry is there in uh, uh, in Guru Granth Sahib. His name was Ram Das. And then Guru Nanak Ji, was also uh, a mystical figure um, whose poetry is there. So you see, uh, you see our problem. I mean, when we look at no, the because although yeah. they were from different religions, uh, they were all spiritually enlightened, and that's where the spiritual element of Sikhism comes in. When they when they do, 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 do you accept that Guru Nanak Ji took deep inspiration from Islam and Muslims? In fact, a lot of no. Islam, uh, a actually, lot of his thought, a lot of his no, moral no. philosophy is in line with Islamic theology. Yeah. Because there's truth in Islam, there's truth in many religions, there's truth right. in, in Hinduism. So obviously the truth is going to be consistent, whether it comes from Islam, whether it comes from Buddhism, whether it comes from wherever, it could come from atheism. Uh, the are, truth, are, the truth. are you but aware, are you God, aware that Guru Nanak Ji praised Prophet Muhammad? Are you aware of yeah. that? Yes. Yeah, uh, but okay. he, but when he, when he does that, when he does that, he does it in the context. He's, he's talking specifically uh, to Muslims. Because you have to understand that. Uh, why, why would you? Why would you it, it references different people. It's, we call it Jagat Guru, which means. I, I uh, understand. I understand. He's Jagat, Jagat Guru. He's Jagat Guru. He came from the whole world. But if he's yeah. Jagat Guru, right, then he should yeah. be telling people to follow him. What seems to he be the case? He Sikhs to follow him. Sorry? He tells our Sikhs to follow him. Then why, why is he Jagat Guru then? Because he's, telling, he's telling because, because we're not here to divide religions. We're not here to, you know, divide uh, people from their prophets, from their their gurus, so to speak. Because then, then, in our nature, in our nature as humans, in our nature of humans, we have the ability. We are ignorant by nature, you know. So it's very hard for someone who is so deeply uh, inclined into one faith to accept something else. So the guru accepts that. And we believe that Guru Nanak was in communion with God, and there's many, uh, there's many quotes that actually support well, that. My, my my problem is if Guru Nanak Ji is telling the Muslims that if you want to prosper, if you want to succeed, then yeah. follow Muhammad. Okay, this is this is the this I'm paraphrasing the words of Guru Granth Sahib. Okay, these are the words of Guru Nanak Ji. I'm paraphrasing, right? If that's the case. Then effectively, Guru Nanak Ji is telling the Muslims to not follow him, follow your own prophet, and you will prosper. If you follow him properly, I can understand yeah. that Guru Nanak Ji had problems with certain practices that were taking place in India at the time, and he had he had criticism of certain Muslim practices. But what he was telling the Muslims was to follow Muhammad properly, and you will prosper, which we believe in. 
we actually agree with Guru Nanak Ji on that point that if Muslims start to follow Prophet Muhammad, they will not only have success in this world, they will have success in the hereafter. They will go to paradise. They will have the pleasure of God. So by yeah. that virtue, by that virtue, we Muslims have to be good Muslims, in other words. And Guru Nanak Ji, if he's if he's uh, telling the Muslims to follow Muhammad, then that means that Guru Nanak Ji actually is endorsing the Prophet prophethood of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Would you agree with that? For Muslims, yeah. Okay. He's endorsing okay. Muhammad and Okay, that's fine. Sorry to cut you all short. Sorry, we need to uh, move on. I'm going to wrap up the show soon. Thank you, um, Lone Wolf, to, uh, for joining with us and sharing with your view uh, in terms of why you believe and why you should believe. And it's interesting points raised here. Where before we go, one final point, Brother Mansoor, with your permission. I know you're the host, so I would... The final point I was going to make with the brother Lone Wolf, I don't know your name, so I have to call you Lone, Lone Wolf. Um, the final point was that if Guru Nanak Ji is telling the Muslims that Muhammad is a true prophet for you, then that means he cannot be a liar for us. For us, he cannot be a liar, right? And if he's not a liar, if he's a true prophet for us, as Guru Nanak Ji confirms, then we have to follow him. When we follow him, he's the one who tells us that there is no prophet after me. You don't have to follow anyone after me. By that virtue, we don't have to follow Guru Nanak Ji. Guru Nanak Ji, who the Sikhs uh, respectfully claim that he's the Jagat Guru, then we don't have to follow him because he himself is telling us that Prophet Muhammad is a true prophet for you, the Muslims. You don't have to follow me because he's the one telling you that you don't have to follow me. You see the point? That, that's you see completely the point? fine. No, that's not dialect. That's completely fine. But for the Sikhs, we should follow Guru Nanak because okay. uh, he he directly says that I've received um, a revelation from God. And as I speak, uh, there's actually a quote that, that relates to that. But but then then Prophet sorry. Muhammad cannot be a truth, truthful man. Then Guru yeah, Nanak, the he can. And Guru Nanak yeah. is contradicting. He is contradicting himself because if he's telling Muslims that Muhammad is good for you, then he's telling them a false prophet, a liar is good for you. Because he can be true, true, but he can be wrong in certain well, aspects. Well, for example, when he says that he's the final prophet, obviously Guru Nanak would not believe that. Because he he be the can you mute yourself, brothers? Go ahead. Sorry, there's a lot of background noise. Um, Thank you, Lone Wolf. I, there seems to be a lot of um, dilemma rather than um, a clarification or clarity in the message of Guru Nanak, because if Guru Nanak is saying it's okay to follow Prophet Muhammad, then you can clearly see Prophet Muhammad says, you know, this is the only religion acceptable in the sight of God. I would like to see um, if Brother Sabur wants to add a point and then we move on to our next um, yeah. uh, uh, guest who wants to join before we end, end, the, show, end the show soon. Sabur, I just wanted to add a simple point. Which Sabur, is yeah, I just want you to add a simple point, which is that um, basics of Sikhi, uh, Jagraj uh, Singh, he actually had a debate with Hamza um, on this particular topic of pluralism. Uh, you know, all uh, philosophies essentially lead to one. Um, so please check that out in a lot more detail.